Hi, I'm Virginia Amos. I'm a realtor with Caldwell Banker, and this is the Virginia Amos Show. We like to talk about all things real estate, statistics, uh, what's going on in the market, but we especially like to talk about what goes on in your home, and sometimes that involves renovations. So today we are going to be talking to Linda Constantine with End Time Design. Just wait till you see what she does. Hi everybody, I'm Virginia Amos and I am here today with Linda Constantine who is the principal kitchen designer and owner of In Time Design. Welcome, Linda. Thank you, it's good to be here. Good, now, uh, full disclosure, Linda is actually in the process of designing my kitchen, which, and that's a whole other story, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But um, I first heard of Linda when I moved to Delray, and we have, as you may know, we have a very active listserv. And whenever people would ask questions about uh, you know, who's doing your kitchen? Are you, where are you getting design services? Linda's name always came up. And it was always in, con particularly in conjunction with the fact that she had a direct relationship with cabinet manufacturers. And the funny thing is, is I actually re recommended Linda to a neighbor of mine who used her a good five years before I was able to even able to call Linda and say, let's do my kitchen. So I knew her by reputation uh, and a friend before I got to um, get started with her myself. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started in the business and how long you've been in business. Well, um, <clears throat> I went to Virginia Tech mm -hmm. and I got a master's degree in ocean engineering. Um, after that, worked for a naval architecture firm for several years, but did realize it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, I left there, just kind of floundered between a lot of different things before I found myself. One of my favorite jobs I ended up getting was a salesperson selling decks and roofs. Hmm. <clears throat> and I think I got that job because I was one of the only ones that showed up to the interview. <laughs> but I learned a ton about sales and I realized immediately I really liked working with homeowners, okay. doing something that they wanted to do. Um, when that company went under and I had no idea what to do. I ended up walking into a Home Depot filling out a uh, application and when I sat down with the store manager he looks at me and he's like what are you doing here? You know looking at my resume and I kind of told him a little bit about everything. He said what do you want to do here? I thought maybe I'll work in the lumber department and mm -hmm. help people design decks and he asked me about kitchen design and I said well what's that? He told me a little bit about it, uh, walked me to the department and I said, wow, this is cool. The designers are on the computer, kind of doing geeky things that I really like and working with homeowners. And I said, yeah, I'd love to give it a shot. And within two weeks, I knew that was it. This was that exactly was what I wanted to do. Yeah. Wow, that's a great story. And I, I must say, based on some frustrations with big box stores, you starting at Home Depot, you really had trial by fire. I did. I mean, we did go through a full six weeks of training mm -hmm. to like learn how to use the software and how to design, but it really was trial by fire. I mean, you get thrown in and you're doing the design in front of the clients and, yeah. you know, it's different than the way we do it now. Yeah. So how long have you had this business? Um, this business, so I worked at Home Depot from 2001 to 2004, Okay. left and then um, started working with contractors after mm -hmm. that, some that I knew that I knew really well and helped them with their proposals and stuff because I knew I wanted to have my own business. So I started in time design in 2005. Okay. And here, here we are. are. Here you are. So it's I been over it. 20 years now. Oh my gosh, that's great. <clears throat> so um, what have you seen change from when you started at Home Depot to where we are now. I mean, personally, I think there's such a different emphasis on kitchens than there used to be, and that ties into all sorts of other things. Yeah, I mean, differences, you know, in my business, we concentrate on cab, you know, in cabinetry. Mm -hmm. And for that, <clears throat> I would say 
in the beginning, people were still doing wood tone kitchens. Yeah. Probably over 50% were wood tone kitchens. Now, the brown kitchen. Everything is is painted. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was very rare for somebody back then to come in and say they wanted like a gray kitchen or something. Mm -hmm. In fact, gray wasn't even available then. It was mostly wood wood kitchens, and it was mostly one tone kitchens. The mm -hmm. island, the perimeter, everything was the same color. And now, everybody wants two tone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would also think I. I th I kind of call it attitude, where, where it's actually architectural design and layout. But at what point did, and maybe when you saw it when you were working with contractors, but what, from what, at what point did we go from the traditional living room, dining room, kitchen closed off to the open concept? I kind of feel like that was before I even started. Really? Yeah, because even once I started, we were almost, you know, people wanted to knock down the, the wall between their kitchen and dining room. Um, people are going away from that formal dining room that they only use two times a year and making it a more casual dining space and extending the kitchen into that dining room. So really, I think it was before me that everything stayed closed off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My mother was somebody who couldn't, <laughs> Never wanted anybody to see the kitchen. And I um, get it. That It was different back then. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. Now, now everybody's, the whole family's involved in the kitchen. Where and nobody had islands. Though that was kind of an unknown. There wasn't enough space. The, That's the, true. The kitchen yeah. wasn't big enough. So now when homes are being built, they're big enough to put in an island. Everybody wants an island. Do you think people ever put in too big of a kitchen? Um... From your standpoint. I do, sometimes, okay. yeah. yep. But usually it is in a pretty massive house, mm -hmm. so it kind of still goes along with the house. But if people entertain a lot, they need to have that big kitchen. If you entertain it a lot, you need two dishwashers. I know it seems crazy, I but know. how I... often do you entertain, start the dishwasher, but you still have the whole countertop full of dishes? So you need that larger kitchen, depending on how you use the kitchen. I remember the first time it was on a house tour, and I saw a kitchen with two dishwashers, and I was just astonished. It was yeah. like, I can't believe something. But then, yes, it makes sense. And it's just like having a butler's pantry, mm -hmm. which is, to me, a huge luxury, because yeah. you can just tuck all those things. An extra space to put away things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of those things. That's, yeah, you don't, you don't think about kind of how these things have um, developed. Um, so what trends do you see now in particular? So again, the trends that I'm going to talk about have a lot more to do with cabinetry than, okay. you know, uh, asking an interior designer who might be talking about the overall right. scope. But for sure, right now, the two-tone kitchen, which I was talking about, mm -hmm. And I think people are going to start doing three tones, like just wow. a small section or a third accent color. If you look at magazines and on Pinterest, mm -hmm. really you're seeing three colors now. So that's definitely a trend. I would say that the apron farm sink seems oh, yeah. to be something that a lot of people are doing. But you talked me out of that. It, it depends. <laughs> It, well, your sink, your sink cabinet was a little small, so your by the time you did a farm sink, it would be too small. Yeah. But if you, a farm sink is a little bit easier to scratch in the mm -hmm. front, you know, if you mm -hmm. have a buckle or anything like that. Um, it's about the look, really. Okay. So, but otherwise trends, I mean, honestly, knocking down walls, opening up. Um, people want to have a space for their children whether they're, if they're young to bake, or knowing that they're gonna be teenagers and they're gonna have their friends over, but just one cabinet or at least one drawer that's just specific to the children. Wow, what a luxury. Uh, again, with my kitchen, I am in a Delray townhouse and we are not knocking down walls. All the plumbing and electrical are staying in the same place, but we are grabbing every extra half inch of space yeah. we can. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really been useful to, to have Linda to work with me on that because she's thought of things that I haven't. Um, and the other thing, though, that you talked, or you didn't talk me into it, but you, you broached the subject and I came around to it, was the induction cooktop. Because really we've had 
you had gas and you had electric. Mm -hmm. And it was determined whether or not you had gas outlet in your house, whether or not you were going to have right. a gas stove. But I remember you asking me, you said, are you planning to stay in your house aging Age gracefully? Age in place. Age in place. Aging gracefully, as it were. And I said, yes. And you said, then I recommend the induction. Yeah. I mean, I, we, I can't possibly keep up with everything that changes with appliances. I mean, right. it's like computers, they, you know. But um, definitely when I've done any kind of training on appliances, the induction is so nice because if you forget to turn something off, once you pull that pot off of there, mm -hmm. you can literally put your hand yeah. right on it and it's yeah. cold. You know, so it's a little bit safer. But in general, most people like to cook with gas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have a gas grill right outside the back door, and that, that's how I'm justifying the fact that I'm getting mm -hmm. But I, I confess that I have left the stove on. Okay. I take something off, and, I, and it, that really, you know, it, it hit home that I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so, um, oh, uh, I think I was saying it earlier, and watching my, um, you can go down the rabbit hole with YouTube videos. But people were talking, some of the designers that I was watching, talking about how they liked statement, um, like a statement piece of marble or a statement piece of granite that would either be like behind the stove or over a waterfall. Do you see much of that? Usually for the waterfall countertops, that's going to be, and, and you're talking where the countertop goes down the side mm -hmm. of the countertop. Yeah. Yeah. So when people really want that modern feel, mm -hmm. they're doing that. Okay. Um, a statement piece, usually if there's an island, they want that island to stand, to out, stand out. Which is one reason why, you, you know, doing a different color really helps with that. Doing maybe some furniture legs or decorative baseboard molding right. around it, things right. like that. Doing the counter backsplash up the wall mm -hmm. is a gorgeous, almost, it's a seamless feel because when you do tile, you have grout lines. Right. So the more modern somebody wants their kitchen to look, the less lines they want in it, that's when you're gonna see those waterfalls and those okay. backsplashes. Okay. It depends on budget though. Yeah. The more countertop you purchase, <laughs> the higher your budget yeah. is. So you, a lot, of, I mean, almost always, it's let's do everything you possibly want in this kitchen. How much is it? And then we backtrack. Okay, because like really, here's our, it's like here's our house, house. Yeah. so what do we take out, what do we take out, and then all of a sudden, you know, we don't really need that waterfall yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. It's like list everything you want in a house, mm -hmm. and then we'll see. Yeah, and then what, where are we compromising? Yeah, where and, are you compromising? Yeah. So the reverse of that, what trends do you see kind of slipping away? You know, when I first started in the business, everybody wanted a desk area in the kitchen. Uh, that's my number one. It, very rare does somebody want a desk area in the kitchen because you just have your iPad or your laptop. Yeah. And yeah. you can sit anywhere. Yeah. You know, uh, that's the biggest one. And that makes perfect sense mm -hmm. to me because now when I go into houses and I see a desk area, I'm kind of like, why? Right. Because it used to be that you had a desktop computer that didn't move, you know, and that was your designated spot. Yeah. So. Yeah, so now cause you can pull up your, your recipes on your iPad and just stick it there on the counter right. and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that makes perfect sense. So, um, mainly because I'm doing it. Now, I'm, do <laughs> I'm doing open shelving. Mm -hmm. but again, because <clears throat> my kitchen is small and I think the cabinets make it look closed in. Do you do much open shelving? We do. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, if you look on Pinterest or Howl's, a lot at unrealistic kitchens pretty much you know they're huge and yeah. have these tall ceilings but you see a lot more open shelving even if you watch tv shows think about some of your favorite tv shows sitcoms or series in the kitchens there's so many glass doors mm -hmm. and so, i mean think about it next time you do it almost all of the doors are glass nobody does that but it looks better on tv you know right. it looks cool to do right. that open shelves make you have that open feel. There's negatives to it. I mean, you know, it's gonna get dusty. They're not as deep as regular cabinets, but in your kitchen, because it is a smaller kitchen, it is gonna make it feel much more open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the first time I saw open shelves was in a movie. 
And I was just like, oh my gosh, those are just fabulous. You know? And doing those shelves a different color is a neat thing to do as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have the island in a wood tone, make the open shelves that are in the perimeter that same tone. Right. You know, to kind of pull it all together. Yeah. Or something rustic. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, talking about HGTV, are those kitchens realistic? I mean, is that a good representation of what you can do when you're just, when you really have all the money in the world? I mean, yes and no. <laughs> um, when you watch something on HTV, I mean, it is a real project, so it is real. They are usually knocking down walls and putting in new cabinets, and uh, there is good ideas that you can get from HGTV. I know in this area in particular, prices are a little higher than elsewhere, mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't think that the price on HGTV is realistic, and I don't think the time frame that they make it seem like you can do a whole home in one week. I guess you could if you have a hundred contractors in there and right. all the materials yeah. literally yeah. right there. Right. You know, they're using stock cabinets, and okay. we know that cabinets, especially now, are taking <laughs> three months right. or more. So. That part I don't think is realistic, but what you can do and the ideas that you get I think are great on HGTV. Okay. You brought up something I wanted to touch on, the supply chain. Um, how is it, and, and, it, and <coughs> in my own experience, it changes overnight. Yeah, it does change overnight, um, right? We had times when cabinets were taking, actually in the brand of cabinets that you purchased, at one point it was six months. Now it's basically three months. Okay. Most of our brands are coming in in three months, but what we're finding that's different from before is we have a date of when they're coming. We know ahead of time we get this one week window, and then all of a sudden we get an email. Oh, these four orders, sorry, are gonna be two weeks later than we originally told you. So what we're having to do to change our business is telling people, here's the window that we see, but please don't demo your kitchen based on that. Wait till the cabinets come. We have no back orders. Everything looks good. Then demo your kitchen, which is really hard for contractors. Yes. How can they? Yeah. How can they plan a demo date? And then if it gets pushed two weeks, so I mean, it, I think what's really happening is people are not starting. They're not even talking to the contractor until the cabinets are in, and then they might not even start for a month or two. Yeah. So our warehouse is jam packed <laughs> with cabinets because of this. And yeah. it really is one of those things, you remember those machines that you would put a marble in and it would go to, yeah. it, it just, it affects everything. That marbles, you know, you hit that marble and it's gonna hit a, another hundred marbles right. on the way down and just. Um, well, and with, with COVID right now and the restrictions, if you think about a, a cabinet manufacturing plant that has 50 freight trucks or 20, however many come per day, if, several of the people tested positive for COVID, now that truck's not showing up. Right. So now it's not leaving the factory. So now they don't have room for more cabinets. And then, you know, so it just goes yeah. all the way back and, you know, it's like a traffic jam that shouldn't be a traffic jam. Yeah. One last question and then um, we'll tell our viewers what's coming next. What is the biggest, how would you define the difference between a renovation and a refresh? Several different ways, really. I mean, a refresh to me means you are just keeping almost exactly what you have, but just making it look nicer. Okay. So maybe you're putting your house up for market and the cabinets are the old, you know, stained wood. Right. So you have a contractor come in and paint the kitchen. Okay. Maybe you get a new countertop, maybe some new appliances and then all of a sudden it looks like a completely different okay. kitchen. So I consider that a refresh. Okay. Maybe you keep the same cabinets, but get new doors and drawer fronts. Mm -hmm. um, renovation, you're demoing everything. You're demoing everything. Yeah, maybe you keep your floors, maybe you don't, maybe you keep some of your appliances, but pulling out the cabinets and countertops, that's, that's a renovation. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Now, the Thanks next, for having me. Thank you. The next time we're together, um, I'm going to ask Linda to actually walk us through the design process from when you first start talking about it to when you call Linda to um, when you get down to picking out your colors 
and your uh, your countertops. So if you have questions, specific questions that you'd like answered, please let us know and we'll try and get that all in. In the meantime, uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks and don't forget to spread the good news in Alexandria. Thank you.